Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I wanted to talk to you guys in just a quick short video about a bunch of series that I have not yet finished, but I want to finish at some point, hopefully soon in the future. This is not going to be comprehensive in any way. It's also not going to include any series that aren't finished yet because that would just make this video absurdly long. So these are just probably my top 10 series that I have started or read the first few books in and are completed. They're done being written, I just haven't gotten around to finishing them. The first series on this list that I wanted to talk about was the Ash Princess series by Laura Sebastian. I raved in a review about Ash Princess uh, months ago, probably back in like June. Um, I can link a, that up above. And then I got the next two books in the series and then I just haven't picked them up yet. I don't know why. Uh, it's definitely on my priority list. I will get to them hopefully soon, but I haven't read them. The next series that I've had on my TBR for a while is the last book in The Chronicles of the One by Nora Roberts. I absolutely loved Year One. I know I talk about Nora Roberts on my channel a lot. I mean, I, I just, her writing style, it, it just clicks with me. And I know a lot of people really disagree with that, but Whenever I read her books, I know it's going to be something that, while maybe not the most amazing book that I've ever read, it's going to be something that I enjoy. And when she wrote the Chronicles of the One series, it was different from anything she's ever done. I mean, it's it's very much like a, I don't know, like a dystopian fantasy, I guess you could call it? I don't really have a description for it, but essentially the world as we know it ends because of a curse and people are forced to absolutely completely relearn how to live their lives without technology, but there are like fairies and wizards and stuff, so it, yeah, I, I guess a dystopian futuristic fantasy is what we'll stick with. I don't know what else to call it. So I read Year One and I read Of Blood and Bone and I have Rise of Magics that I got super cheap at a library sale and I just haven't picked it up yet. That's not to say that I don't want to or that I won't. It's I wanted to read it, I think it came out a year ago, so that's how far behind I am. I guess I should mention that I, these are really not in any particular order whatsoever. Um, I just wrote a list of books that I had read in series that I haven't finished yet, and that's where we're at. So the next one on the list is The Ark of the Scythe series by Neil Shusterman. I read Scythe in one night, I'm pretty sure. If it wasn't one night, then it was like I fell asleep reading it and I picked it back up the next morning. I loved Scythe. In Scythe, you are in the future. It's a dystopian utopia where humankind has completely defeated death and disease and all of that stuff. So the only way that people can die is if their lives are taken by Scythes. Um, now you follow two apprentices whose names I can't recall quite at the moment, who become apprentices to a Scythe and they learn the art of killing people, essentially. Um, it's kind of a dark concept. It's an interesting concept. You definitely have to suspend your thoughts on reality or what's possible. Um, so it's very much like sci-fi in that way, I would say. But the first book was so good. I, like I said, I, I read it practically in one sitting. I have Thunderhead. I have not picked up Thunderhead. The Toll came out way too early for me in a library hold. I wasn't ready for it yet, so... Yeah, I need to finish that eventually. I really, really enjoyed the first book. The next book on my list is Nevernight by Jay Kristoff. I read Nevernight. Um, while not my favorite Jay Kristoff book, I did enjoy it. And I have God's Grave. I have not picked up God's Grave. And it's because I need to figure out how I feel about where the series is going as far as I know. So Nevernight follows Mia Corvair, who is a girl who used to be from a very rich family and watched her family get murdered in front of her. And because she wants to avenge them, she finds her way to an assassin school. And the first book, Nevernight, follows her as she is in that assassin school and she learns how to murder people very, very, very violently. It was great. I liked it. I... I don't know that I loved it, but I liked it enough to want to continue on with the rest of the series. There is lots of violence. There is betrayal, for sure. Um, there are hints of a romance, which did not go the way that I thought that it was going to go, and apparently in the rest of the series continues to go the way that I don't think that it's going to go. So, 
that's kind of what's holding me up a little bit. I really don't know if I can wrap my head around where they took the romance in this book, which is something that's like very important plot wise to me. I've got to get behind the relationship, otherwise I struggle to to read the whole thing. The footnotes, which I know are a turnoff for a lot of people for this series, are really hit or miss for me. Sometimes they really bothered me and took me out of the story. Sometimes they literally just made me laugh out loud while I was reading. So I can take or leave them, I really don't care. But I am intrigued enough to want to continue on with the series eventually, I just don't know when. I have God's Grave. I think that if I like God's Grave, I'll probably pick up Dark Dawn in the future. But for right now, I'll see how I like God's Grave first. The next series on my list is The Diviners by Libba Bray. I read the first book and I listened to the first audiobook kind of simultaneously. Um, I really enjoyed it. I think I ended up giving it four or five stars, I can't really quite remember. Um, but The Diviners takes place in, in the 1920s, and it follows a cast of characters that have special abilities. What are they? I couldn't tell you. I think I read the book in January, I just know that they have special abilities. Um, but essentially a serial killer ghost is released in New York City and the main character somehow gets drawn into trying to find out who is doing these killings and help to solve the murder. The 1920s has always been like a really fun period of history for me to read about, especially like when you add the fantastical element to it. So there's like a paranormal element on top of all of the 1920s vibes and it just the audiobook was so good. I think, I want to say January Lavoie is the person who reads it, and she does such a phenomenal job with that audiobook. So if you haven't listened to it, I highly recommend. I know that the final book, I want to say it's called King of Crows, came out earlier this year, late last year. So I want to finish it all. I just haven't gotten around to it yet, but hopefully I will. The next series on my list is Shades of Magic by V.E. Schwab. The very first book, A Darker Shade of Magic, I finished. I gave four stars, I'm pretty sure. Um, these follow Kel, who I can't remember exactly what what he does is called, um, but essentially he can jump around to different alternative realities of London. There's like different layers of London, the city in this world. There's like a grey London, there's a white London, there's a red London, I think there's a black London. Um, and he is one of the very few people that exists that is able to travel to these different dimensions of London. And you follow him and Lila? We're gonna go with Lila. I think it's Lila. I really enjoyed it. it. It took me a little bit to read because I was still trying to figure out what all was going on. But what I, but from what I can remember, I really, really enjoyed it. I do have the second book. I think it's called The Gathering of Shadows. I plan to read that at some point eventually. And if I like it, I will be moving on to A Conjuring of Light. The next series on my list is Shadow and Bone or the Grishaverse Trilogy by Lee Bardugo. I read Shadow and Bone earlier this year. I don't know if I gave it three or four stars. It wasn't my favorite. Shadow and Bone follows a young girl whose name I can't remember right now, but she essentially is discovered to have a very special power that drives away the darkness. And she is taken away to a school to learn how to use her powers because the darkness has overtaken the land and she is their only hope of survival or whatever, something like that. I don't know. She goes to the school, she learns how to use it, she ends up getting tricked in some way. There's a darkling who like you kind of think might be a good guy, but like by his name you should kind of tell that he's not a good guy. I... I didn't love the first book in this series, but it's becoming a TV show and I really really love the Six of Crows duology, also by Lee Bardugo, which is in the same world which actually takes place after the Grishaverse trilogy, so I just really feel obligated to finish it. I'm really hoping that they get better. They just read like really, really young, young adult, and I just don't know that they're for me exactly, but it could just be the first book. I really don't know, so I'm going to continue on with the series and see what I think of the, the three books as a whole. The next series on my list is The Witcher Books by Andrei Sapkowski. I have read the first one, which is The Last Wish, um, which is a series of short stories about The Witcher, and it's actually the book that the TV show on Netflix follows most closely to. I would absolutely love to move on to reading Sword of Destiny. I actually don't have a physical copy of that. I need to pick that up at some point, but I would like to pick it up and move on to 
I think Blood of Elves is the first actual book in the series. Before the second season comes out, I also need to play the video game. It's a whole thing. I, I need to get a move on before I just can't catch up. So I read The Last Wish, I really enjoyed The Last Wish, and I really like that the TV show kind of seemed to stick to a lot of the stories in The Last Wish rather closely from what I could tell. So yeah, I'd like to move on to next short story collection or so that I can start the rest of the series. The next series on my list, I would be remiss if I wasn't putting it on here. My husband wants me to finish the Drist books by R.A. Salvatore at some point. Um, so I started reading the Icewind Dale trilogy earlier this year. I read A Crystal Shard, I think it's called. There's two books left in that trilogy that I need to finish and I will move on to that at some point. I read the other trilogy about Drist, which is like the prequel trilogy first, and they were pretty good, so then I moved on to the Icewind Dale trilogy, and that is the one that I need to finish next. The final series on my list is the Dieva Bad books by S.A. Chakra Bordy. I read City of Brass earlier on this year, and I really, really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed the Egyptian mythology, I enjoyed the characters, I enjoyed the beautiful writing, and I absolutely want to move on to the next two books in the series. I uh, just haven't gotten a chance to do it yet. I don't own them physically. I might have to be, I think the audiobooks might be on script, so I might try that. But I just haven't gotten there yet, and I really want to finish them. In City of Brass, you follow Nari, who is a con woman on the streets of Cairo. She accidentally, uh during one of her cons, manages to summon a jinn warrior named Dara. This brings her to the attention of some evil jinn who are now trying to kill her, and Dara whisks her out of Cairo and to the city of Daevabad in order to protect her. Follow them throughout their journey, and you also learn more about the jinn mythologies and them as a people. You get to see the city of Brass, which is another name for Daevabad. You get to watch Nari figure some things out about her past. You also follow a second character named Ali, who is a prince in Daevabad, and you get to learn a little bit more about the politics and the state of the city and the different kinds of jinn that exist as you go through the story. It's really beautiful. The mythology is so interesting to learn about, and I really, really enjoyed reading it, so I can't wait to move on. So I tried not to make it too long, but that is my list of 10 series that I still need to finish. Like I said, it is by no means comprehensive. There are lots of series out there that I've started and not finished yet. Now that I'm looking at my camera, I've already talked about how I need to finish the Shattered Realm series by Cinda William Chima, which is finished and I just didn't put it on this list. So, you know, it is what it is. We'll get there eventually. I've got two books left. It's definitely high on my priority list. But like I said, I will be reading all of these eventually, and hopefully I will be enjoying all of these eventually. And that is it for this video, so I will talk to you guys in the next one. Bye! <laughs>